So what should I say other than I think this is the second talk on the subject and uh, it is given by Ernesto Lupecio on, uh, from Simvestal. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start with the second part. I'll, uh, I'll briefly review uh, the first part. Uh, so uh, this time we want to do the geometric invariant theory. Uh, so what we want to do is this geometric invariant theory in the non-commutative case. Uh, but, uh, but first I, I'm going to quickly review what we did last time so that you are on the same page. So very briefly, the first, this was what was going on in classical toric geometry. Uh, we have a toric variety, which is an equivalent compactification of a complex torus. Uh, one can think uh, of it as a symplectic manifold, and it has a moment map because this is a Hamiltonian action. The image of the moment map is a polytope that is a Del Sant rational convex polytope. And uh, uh, the inverse image of uh, every point here on the polytope is a real torus, a real Lagrangian torus inside the symplectic manifold. So that's the classical situation. Now we have the quantum situation, the non-commutative situation, the non-commutative geometry. These torus, the real torus here, and these torus, the complex torus that is dense in the in the toric variety, both will become quantum torus, quantum tori, non-commutative toruses. Uh, so uh, they, uh, we still will have a moment map, as, I, as we will see today. We still uh, have, a, say, a polytope or a fan, or a fan. We still have a polytope, uh, or more generally, a fan. But now the polytope is possibly irrational. It, no, it's possibly irrational. This polytope is still convex. The same combinatorial condition, but now the the arithmetic condition is relaxed, and now it is a possibly irrational polytope. When it is rational. The toric variety is a classical toric variety. When it is irrational, it is a non-commutative space. It is a quantum toric variety. And, uh, and then the dense torus becomes a complex quantum torus, a non-commutative space. And uh, that's that. Uh, today we want to see this moment map. And today we also want to see this modular space. When we allow, when we relax this rationality into this irrationality condition, then we can form the modular space where the rational points are the classical toric varieties. But now we have all the irrational points of the modular space that are all the non-commutative quantum toric varieties. I don't know, all the irrational points are the non-commutative quantum toric varieties. And uh, we have a, a tight Muller space that we will see today in action. And we have this, well, this, uh, this modular space that is uh, in analogy to the classical modular space of curves has a, a, a number, you know, that index in it and a combinatorial object. In this case it was also a number because the genus was totally encoded. The combinatorial type of the, of the Riemann surface was totally encoded in the genus that it was just a number. But now it's a combinatorial object, it's a pole set, as we will see. So we have a combinatorics and a number, and these two indices index the modular spaces in, and in the so-called super simplicial case, we have so far, probably more cases, but it's complicated, but we can prove so far that in the super simplicial case, we will have a nice compactification of this modular space of toric variety. This modular space cannot be formed only with the classical toric varieties, but you also need the quantum non-commutative toric varieties to form this modular space. So uh, that, that was the situation. The quantum torus, we considered it as a stack, as a quotient stack of uh, an ordinary torus via this, this action that produces this foliation, uh, the Kronecker foliation. Uh, 
So uh, there is this functor from foliations to non-commutative algebras, a con functor, con convolution functor, and we obtain the classical algebra for the quantum torus out of this foliation. Uh, and this is the what we compactify. We take we take the transversal, the transversal to the foliation. We get. Uh, we get and we take the universal covering we get the 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 kind of lie algebra the space where the where the fan is going to live and we get a, just taking one of these leaves of this foliation going about we get a lattice a quantum lattice that contains the information of the foliation so this quantum lattice contains the information of the foliation so in the more general situation this is a quantum fan. So what is a quantum fan? Uh, uh, a quantum fan was an ordinary fan, but it had this quantum lattice that it that you imagine it's the leaf of the foliation going over and over and over. So it, it's optim dense. In the non-commutative case, it is dense. In the quantum case, it is dense. So we get this quantum fan with this quantum lattice. And uh, this quantum fan could have several, uh, uh, one of many properties. Now, of course, the fan in the past had to be rational, but now it can be irrational. And uh, it is required to be rational to be truly uh, non commutative. In the rational case, the whole situation is more eta equivalent to a, a, a commutative situation, and, and you end up with a, with a classical toric variety. It can be simplicial or not simplicial, more on this later. It can be complete uh, or not complete. It can be gamma complete. By gamma complete, this is an important uh, case for us. We mean that gamma, the quantum lattice, is given, is generated by a, 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 the choice of a point in every one of the rays of the one skeleton of the fan. Here I would like to clarify that. Uh, while in the classical case, you could choose a uh, shortest primitive generator because this was a rational ray. Now they are not rational and we have to choose these Planck lengths. These Planck lengths we have to choose. So we choose these Planck lengths and then we are, uh, uh, we could generate the whole of gamma or not. If it generates the whole of gamma, we call it gamma complete. Uh, any case, uh, in, in reality, because there is a functor, there is a functor from stacks. There is a functor from stacks to non-commutative algebras. Uh, we can entirely encode the information of the non-commutative algebra on a stack. So. Uh, uh, in a sense, the uh, the algebra of functions on these stacks is no longer just a commutative algebra, but is a non-commutative algebra. This algebra of functions on this stack. To, to make this precise, you have to do a little bit of operator algebras and consider a, a kind of families of compact operators over the equivariant compact operators over the stack. But let's not the the uh, Go there today. Let's just say that one can go from stacks to non-commutative algebras. So I'm going to work with the stacks to produce all these objects. And my stacks, remember, were uh, stacks over the side of uh, affine toric varieties. We, we define a side of affine toric varieties. We define the side of affine toric varieties. And all, our st all the stacks. Uh, uh, that represent the quantum tori and the quantum tori varieties, all these stacks are stacks over this side. So we have, uh, and the uh, classical toric varieties, uh, the gluings give you the descent data for the stack, uh, for the growth of the descent. In any case, uh, uh, in examples with, for example, this kind of quantum lattice in one dimension, uh, you, you could make sense of these sort of expressions in green you could make sort of this sort of expressions. So uh, this quantum toric geometry, although it's non-commutative geometry, 
can also be encoded in a kind of a funny commutative geometry, but this commutative geometry has a, a, these irrational exponents going about. Uh, to make a, a, a complete sense of these irrational exponents, you need this non-commutative algebra or these stacks. In any case, uh, we, we were able to define by charts using, uh, if, you, if you gave me a quantum fan, one of those things that was a fan with a quantum lattice, uh, we were able to produce by charts and by all these gluings, uh, uh, simplicial quantum torque stacks. So just as in the classical theory, uh, uh, just if you forget the fan, so to speak, you remember just the lattice, in the classical theory, you had a torus, and the complexification of this torus was the dense torus in the complex toric variety. Likewise, if we just if you just forget the structure of the fan and you just remember the quantum lattice, uh, this gives you a quantum torus whose complexification, the complex quantum torus, is the one that is going to be dense in this quantum toric stack. This is a this is a equivariant compactification of the complex quantum uh, of the complexification of the quantum torus associated to the just the quantum lattice in the quantum fan too many quantums okay so as an example we had a a, a quantum p1 uh, this is uh, this is the situation in the in the most classical quantum torus this is the this is the universal covering to the transversal of the Kronecker foliation. And the red stuff is one of the leaps going over and over and over the transversal, and that's the quantum lattice. This is, the red stuff is the quantum lattice. Okay, so we have that, and uh, we could do quantum P1s, quantum P2s. Uh, uh, we had an important, uh, important definition for us that is, uh, uh, if we, we refine, we turn on the gerb, we turn on a V-field. And uh, mathematically, what this means is that rather than just considering the quantum lattice, just naked inside, uh, just naked inside uh, RD, we consider it as the image of a higher dimensional, uh, non-dense, nice lattice inside RM. So imagine you have this Rn bigger than D, and now you have this canonical kind of a straight lattice in Rn, and you project it somehow into lower dimensional Rd to get your quantum lattice. And this choice of this projection, this choice of these uh, generators, so to speak, is what we're going to call a, a, a calibration. And we think, and we uh, we can always arrange matters so that it is uh, you hit the canonical E1 ED, you hit the canonical E1 ED, and then you have something else. This something else, this H bar, is going to be the deformation parameter for the quantum system. This is, of course, going to be a quantum integrable system. And so it is a deformation of a, it is a deformation of a, the classical in, integrable system uh, of a toric variety. And each bar is going to be the deformation parameter for this uh, for this family of uh, quantum integrable systems. In any case, uh, 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 we had the fact that well. If we take this into consideration, this H rather than just the lattice, if we just take the lattice is the uncalibrated case. If we take this into consideration, we call it the calibrated. They are slightly different stacks, but one can be recovered from the other because the calibrated stack, it's a, a gerb with band Z to the A over the non-calibrated stack. Now I have to say that the non-commutative algebras uh, well, can, uh, this is an, uh, an extension, uh, a very simple extension. Again, from this, al this algebra and this algebra are related by this kind of extension on a cycle. So, uh, 
So this is the situation. So we are ready to start the talk today after 15 minutes. And this is the quantum geometric invariant theory. Just like in the classical case, you would like to produce the toric variety, not from charts, but from an invariant definition. Uh, uh, so uh, let me try to get from the, from the quantum fan, a uh, uh, geometric invariant theory type of definition for the quantum toric variety. So the clue for this uh, to, to achieve this is the, the in, very important for us, Gale transform. So what is this? Well, what we do is we remember we have the, the calibration or, 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 or the generators of the quantum lattice. We have the calibration or the generators of the quantum lattice that are the plan lengths of this quantum integrable system. And where we take the generators of the quantum lattice and we uh, write this uh, expression, this linear expression on them. And we ask for a duality. We, we want to get these vectors in obviously Rn minus V uh, that produce uh, the Xi for the Vi's. So this is equal to zero if and only if x1 is a1 times t and xn is a n times t for t in r n minus v. So we want to compute the kernel of this map. We want to compute the kernel of h. So we want to compute the kernel and uh, we want these kind of generators for the kernel of h. h is the calibration of the quantum fan. So uh, again, h is one plus h bar. h bar is the deformation parameter. And again, we have this expression. So this is basic linear algebra. It's important for us to know this though, that this is an integer number, that the fact that this is an integer number for all i implies that this is in the quantum lattice. So we, we have transformed the expression of the quantum lattice into an arithmetic condition. Notice though that uh, if this was a ordinary classical fan for a classical toric variety, we would have a rationality condition on the AIs because the VIs themselves would be rational. But now the VIs can be irrational and the AIs can be irrational and so uh, this is an arithmetic condition re with respect to the irrationalities of the AIs. With respect to the irrationalities of the AIs, with respect to the quantum lattice gamma, we still have an arithmetic condition with respect to the quantum lattice gamma. Okay, this will be familiar from geometric invariant theory. Uh, we, uh, we can take the um, semi-stable locus. In any case, in, in, in our situation, we just define the index set of Z as, this, as the indices where Z doesn't vanish for just a vector, Z1, Z2, Zn. So uh, we just have a vector uh, uh, in Zn. Well, this is the, the indices that don't vanish. And uh, with this, we define uh, S is an open set inside Zn uh, plus one. Here I made a mistake, sorry. Uh, that is, well, it's defined by the combinatorics of the fan. This is totally defined by the, only depends on the combinatorics of the fan. So given the combinatorics of the fan, we produce an open set in Zn plus one. Now this is an affine, this open set is just an affine toric variety, of course, uh, but it, it not only has the torus action, of course it has the torus action, but it also has 
this other action, A, of, Z, of Zn minus D on S. Now, because A could be rational or irrational, if A was rational, this would be, like in classical toric geometry, a second torus action. But because AI are most of the time irrational, it's not a torus action, but rather the universal covering of the torus, Zn minus D, that winds and winds and winds around these leaves, depending on the rationalities of the AIs, this defines a foliation on S with leaves that wind and wind and wind about S. Uh, of dimension n minus d, complex leaps of dimension n minus d inside of s. So you can think of it as an action, but you can think of it as that defining a foliation. And this foliation, well, it's either rational or irrational. The leaps either close up and are compact or not and are dense in some regions of s. This action commute with the torus action from the fact that this is a classical affine toric variety. In any case, uh, the theorem uh, for quantum non-commutative geometric invariant theory is as follows. The, the quotient stack S mod A by this Cn minus D action on S, and now it's a global quotient. Notice that now I'm not doing charts, I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just taking the semi-stable locus, and I'm dividing by a non-compact group because the group is non-compact. Uh, sometimes it acts compactly when A is rational, but when A is irrational, A coming from the Gale transform on the calibration H, that is the deformation parameter for the quantum integrable system, this Cn minus D is acting, a non-compact group acting on an open set, of a, of a fine space. Well, most often than not, if I just wanted to do the quotient, I would get a non house of the space. This is uh, the telling, this is telling us that this is a non commutative space. Well, it is a stack over the side A of a fine toric variety. And it is, in fact, exactly the calibrated quantum toric variety defined by the calibrated fan that we defined by charts last talk. So this is exactly a calibrated quantum torque variety defined in terms of geometric invariant theory taking the semi-stable locus. So uh, again, just like in the classical quantum torus, uh, if uh, there were two cases for the chronicle foliation. If the slope was rational, it was just an ordinary Morita equivalent to just an ordinary torus. And if the slope was irrational, it was a bona fide quantum non commutative space. Exactly the same occurs here. In fact, the same occurs inside of this because inside of this, we have a quantum torus uh, uh, where this is exactly happening. Uh, uh, this is the equivalent compactification of a quantum torus. In any case, uh, where there is this rationality condition discovered by Merseman and Berhovsky that uh, in the paper, in, in ACT hours, uh, they show that you can, this recovers all, if you have the rationality conditions, in, in, in the language of that paper is K, then you recover exactly classical toric variety. But when you lose the rationality condition, uh, then you get, well, the calibrated quantum toric varieties. You get the calibrated quantum toric varieties. So this is geometric invariant theory in the non-commutative quantum case. Let me stop one second to make this slightly less uh, uh, one-sided. And let me ask if you have any questions so far. Nobody has any question? Well, I'll just continue then. So uh, there is another way to think about this geometric invariant theory that is rather beautiful. That is, uh, rather than, remember this is the calibrated and it was very important 
for us to define the calibrated case so that this geometric invariant theory works in such a clean fashion. But you could ask yourself about the non-calibrated case. Why not? It, 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 from a certain point of view, may seem more natural. Although uh, as, uh, as things progress on, the calibrated case seems more and more and more natural. But the non-calibrated case, rather than thinking this as a group action, as, a non, as an abelian, uh, complex, holomorphic, uh, non-compact group action on S, you can think of it as a foliation, as a foliation of, uh, on S. You can think of it as a foliation on S. For you forget the group action and you just remember the foliation. It's a holomorphic foliation. And so well, it has a holonomy groupoid. And uh, if you think of the, of the, and this is closer to the, to the way people in non-commutative geometry think, you take the holonomy groupoid, and you take the stackification of the holonomy groupoid, the stack associated to the holonomy groupoid, then you get the non-calibrated quantum toric variety. Now, this is closer to what people think in non-commutative uh, geometry because the holonomy groupoid uh, is amenable to taking this con uh, C star algebra associated to it. And uh, this is a non-commutative C star algebra in the irrational case. And this would be the non-commutative space. Uh, associated to this stack. So in this case, it's very, uh, you, get the, you get the foliation and is, it is exactly the non-calibrated case. To the cali for the calibrated case in terms of algebra, you would have to do algebra extensions with a cocycle. Well, let's consider an oversimplified example, uh, P1, uh, just to get uh, the, the rest of the theory uh, going. Uh, so le le let's consider the, the, the oversimplified case of P1. Okay, so here we have the classical fan for P1. And you have the quantum lattice that is a, a generated, I generated by two real numbers. And uh, I'm going, let, let us assume just to illustrate the situation that these two real numbers are uh, uh, algebraically independent over the rationals. So they are transcendental numbers or whatever, and they are uh, algebraically independent over the rationals. Let's just take that general case. So we generate the quantum lattice by one. We always need one, as I said, and then A and B. Uh, of course, when I divide by, by one, I get a circle, and then I get this, uh, this uh, kind of holonomy subgroupoid uh, there. And uh, then the calibration, well, uh, goes from the calibration in, in this case, goes from Z to the four to R. So that's our calibration. Of course, this is H and this is H bar. H bar goes from Z to the three, you have three plank lengths. Let me do A, let me do B, and let me take one that is not independent, it's convenient. So that I have this uh, tropical, let me call it tropical condition. In any case, this balancing condition. So I have A, I have B, and I have this. And so this is my quantum lattice, and this is my quantum fan. And I want to produce from the quantum fan, P1, A, B. Uh, quantum projective line on two parameters, on two real parameters. Uh, well, uh, this is going to be the equivariant compactification of a quantum torus. Now, this quantum torus is more general than what you are used to in non-commutative geometry, because now we have two rotations acting on the circle. The real torus would be for the circle, and this is the complex torus on C star. So now you have, rather than one rotation acting on the circle, you have two rotations acting on the circle. So you have more generators for your non-commutative algebra, although uh, you are working on S1, on the two torus. Uh, but the homotopy dimension goes up by one in the, in the, 
in the model, in the adequate model category of C star algebras. So, uh, Quillet model category of C star algebras. In any case, so we have two rotations, and you have this is the quantum torus that we're going to compactify. And we just do it the way we know uh, how to do it. We take the additive version of the quantum torus to glue, and we take the multiplicative version, the exponential, the exponentiated and the logarithmic, the exponential, the multiplicative version of the quantum torus to compactify. So here we compactify, here we compactify, and here we glue. So uh, we use this expression to glue, we this expression to compactify, and so we do that. Here it is. This is the compactification. We just add zero here, the compactification, and the gluing. Well, the gluing has to be done in logarithmic fashion, so it looks additive, the gluing, so that we have this power that, because A is irrational, may not make sense, makes perfect sense uh, additively. So we can do this identification. And so what, uh, what, what we get is, 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 is this, we get two, the two hemispheres, but now they are non commuted spaces. Notice that the quotients are non hausdorff this quotient is non hausdorff this quotient is non hausdorff So what, I'm not going to think of them as uh, topological spaces, but as a stacks over the side of a fine toric variety, or after the functor, uh, that, that in this case remembers everything as C star algebras. We think of them as, to, to think of them as scalar objects, I need to think of them as stacks over the side of a fine toric varieties. So I have one hemisphere, I got the other hemisphere, non commutative hemispheres. And notice that the so called orbifold stabilizer, if you want, or something like that, at the poles is uh, uh, unlike in the case of the classical weighted projective spaces where are is finite cyclic groups. Now we have infinite cyclic groups and of rank two at that. But you can think of it as a sort of a football, like in weighted projective spaces. But now you have this infinite, uh, infinite uh, in a further in a further talk to be chimerical uh, orbifold singularities. They will become chimerical orbifold singularities in chimerical algebraic geometry. But for now, they are just uh, these infinite discrete groups and uh, singularities, uh, Klein type singularities. Uh, at the poles. Uh, so, uh, well, th that's that. Now, there is something very interesting, and it is that we can produce a nice modular space of this object that I just described. This modular space, uh, this modular space is going, notice that it has this kind of genus delta and this kind of mara points three, <coughs> three, is the rank of the Mark gerb, and uh, well, this modular space parametrizes all of this. All of this is the set of all of these PADs. So this is uh, set theoretically the set of all these P1s, ABs, quantum P1s, and uh, but it is beautifully, it is not a real orbifold what you would expect originally. But it is a complex orbifold in one complex parameter. It has a complex structure. This is surprising and very beautiful. And this is, if you had the parameters A and B of the quantum fan that I started with, if I have A and B, the parameters of the quantum fan that I started with, I can get one simple complex parameter, although the parameterization is uh, rational and unexpected at first, but it can be obtained uh, for the modular space of these quantum P1s. So when you do the calculations, the modular space of these quantum P1s is just Z mod Z2 with this Z2 action. So it is a complex orbifold. It has a complex structure, an integrable complex structure, and it looks like this. The orbifold point is classical P1. And of course, you have all these rational points that are 
the classical uh, weighted projected P1s, but you get all the irrational points that are the, with the rest of the points that are the non-commutative quantum P1s. And here you have this beautiful modulus space. Now, what does the geometric invariant theory looks like uh, for, uh, for this situation? Well, the geometric invariant theory looks like this. Uh, uh, and this is, uh, this is one way to start to try to relate to this to, to mirror symmetry. So uh, we have P1, just classical P1, the orbifold point of the, I'm going to start by the orbifold point of the modular space, by the most singular point of the modular space. This is the most singular point of the modular space. This is its moment map. The moment map of P1 goes to an interval. And above this, this is a hop vibration. There is a hop vibration on P, over P1, S3, hop vibrates over S2. Remember, well, this is S2. So we have the hop vibration, S3 maps to S2. And this one, I'm going to contract to a point. So this is essentially a hop vibration. Well, why do I do S3 times S1? Because I want a complex modular space. And S3 crosses one, it's a complex manifold. It's a half manifold. So it is a complex manifold, S3 crosses one. And now the fiber, rather than in the classical half vibration, it would be a circle. Now it's a torus, but it's actually an elliptic curve. And so this is a holomorphic, this is an elliptic curve. The elliptic curve has a universal cover that is just a complex line. And of course, given by this parameter, I can take this complex line and form this elliptic curve. Now, this moment map lifts to a lifted non-commutative or whatever moment map to the interval from ST crosses one to the interval so that the inverse image of uh, a point <coughs> Well, it was a circle here, and now it's going to be, I, 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 I have too many S1s here, of course. It was a circle here, and now it's an S1. Uh, ah, yeah, it's a circle of circles, and it's a circle of circle of circles. It's okay. So, uh, because above every point here, I have a torus, a topological torus. So the inverse image of a point here is a three-dimensional topological torus. But of course, I'm going to put a foliation here. This foliation, this thing is foliated by C leaves, actually by elliptic curves at the, at the orbital point of the modular space, in such a way that this divided by this foliation gives P1. So this three-dimensional torus inherits this foliation. And this foliation, in this case, th this case that I'm describing at the moment is at the rational case. This foliation by C leaves is a chronic, a rational Kronecker foliation. Comes with a rational Kronecker foliation. Uh oh, I did something that I shouldn't do. Kronecker foliation. This comes with a rational Kronecker foliation, so I can think of it as a non-commutative torus, as a quantum torus. So, uh, so uh, well, as a commutative torus, because I'm, I'm in the rational case. So what am I going to do to get the whole modular space? I'm going to perturb this foliation holomorphically. It's a holomorphic foliation, so that the leaves open up and now they become C leaves. And this really, right now, it's in the rational case, it's a commutative torus. But as I move holomorphically this foliation, as I move holomorphically this foliation, it becomes this kind of C leaf on this complex manifold. And now I get really non commutative tori as the image of the moment map of this P1, as the inverse image of points of the moment map of this P1. 
Uh, let me just stop one second and ask you if there is any question. Well, okay, I'll go on then. Uh, this is what I do. I move the holomorphically the foliation, and now I have these C leaves on these complex manifolds. Now they are not uh, elliptic curves, and now they became quantum P1s rather than P1s, and I get the whole modular space that I described here. Uh, the, this is not only a foliation on M, it's actually a non compact group acting on M by a non compact complex holomorphic abelian Lie group action on M. And this should, in your mind, remind you of this action of the geometric invariant theory, because it is. So now we are ready to define, uh, well, all this story, the action. Uh, so the way we do it is this N lambda admits, uh, this is a kind of a funny situation. It admits a C infinity embedding that is not holomorphic. So this is kind of a funny situation. N lambda, this, this manifold, S3 crosses one, S3 crosses one, this S3 crosses one, it's always topologically the same. Uh, the lambda really parameterizes the foliation, not the manifold. Admits a C infinity embedding in CP3. So S3 crosses one, can be put inside CP3, in a C infinity fashion. And uh, well, we can define this semi stable locus, take its projectivization, and this leads inside CP3. Remember, the, the one from this geometric invariant theory that I defined before. And uh, uh, remember, given the two parameters, I define a complex parameter. And I'm going to define then this foliation on the in the whole of the projective space, and then restrict it to these manifolds. So as I move this C infinity embedding, miraculously, I get different holomorphic. Although this is a C infinity embedding, as I move <coughs> the embedding <coughs> with the parameters A and B, miraculously, I will still get in every instance, a holomorphic foliation of N lambda. Uh, and sometimes this will, the quotient will be non Hausdorff, and you, I will have to do these stacks. So if I set this lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, and lambda four in this way, notice that these are parameter free. The action is given by this. I can write the explicit formula of the action. And so the manifold becomes this projected by, by this action. That is what the manifold, this manifold becomes. And it's very easy by taking a, a Lagrange multipliers. It's very easy to see that N can be written like this, giving you the promised embedding into CP3. So, this as a C infinity manifold, as a C infinity, not as a holomorphic manifold, as a C infinity manifold, it's intersection of real quadrics that has been deeply studied by Santiago Lopez de Medrano. So this is, this well is the intersection of real quadrics given by these formulas. Ah, well, this is my moment polytope. There is a, a now, if I make these just real parameters, I can produce, a, a, if I forget the, the, the arguments of these complex numbers, I get the moment map, as you would expect. So I get the moment map from the manifold N together with the foliation, compatible with the foliation. It has these fibers, but these fibers carry a Kronecker foliation now. So they are really quantum torus, tori, and this is the situation. This is this, 
This is the projection into this. And this is the quantum P1. The inverse image, I have the moment map. I have the moment map into the polytope. And the inverse image of a point is one of these uh, torus with chronicle foliations. So they are, the inverse image is a quantum torus. This is the simplest possible example of the theory. Now, uh, uh, well, blah, 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 blah is, is what I just said. All the formulas. Well, there is something to be said here, though. Everything can be written in a completely, absolutely explicit manner. Everything can be with all the actions, the moment map, everything can be written in an explicit manner for these stacks in this geometric invariant theory fashion. Okay, now we're ready to generalize. I mean, this was P1, but now we want to do any, every toric variety, and we want to deform every toric variety into a whole modular space of quantum toric varieties using this geometric invariant theory. Uh, so, well, the simplest case is when n minus d is even. In, this is the Kähler case, is the nicest possible case. Uh, and this is the so-called LBM theory uh, because of Lopez de Medrano, Berkowski, and Merzman. So uh, we just generalized what we just did, uh, but using ideas from uh, dynamical systems. So uh, rather than only one complex parameter, now we have a whole bunch of complex parameters. These complex parameters are meant to be obtained from the real parameters that are the points on the rays of the one skeleton of the fan before taking into consideration the combinatorics. These are the just the parameters. Nevertheless, uh, uh, we are asking some combinatorial condition uh, coming from dynamical systems. The Siegel condition, this is the convex hull, and the weak hyperbolicity condition. This is the convex hull, and there is some condition there. So if we have those conditions, and only when we have those conditions, we can mimic everything we just did. We can take S. Now it's, it's a combinatorial object. So we have combinatorics and parameters. And we have these manifolds, complex manifolds. Most often than not, almost always, uh, in this n bigger than 2n plus 1, this is a complex, but non kähler manifolds for trivial topological reasons, uh, as h2 is equal to 0. So we have these complex non kähler manifolds. And there we have this foliation. Well, we have first the torus action, uh, uh, and then we will have the foliation, and we will have all the stars. Uh, in any case, uh, analogous to what we just did, uh, and if we have a, a rash, the rational case, let me just say that in the cake, the merzeman berkowski cake condition, and a modulo. Let me just write this, is rational, is a, all possible classical toric varieties. And then as we drop the rationality condition, we get the quantum toric varieties. That's the basic idea. This has to be further gen generalized. Uh, and let me not dwell very much into this. Let me just say that you can, uh, you would like to relax this dynamical systems conditions for purely combinatorial conditions. And you can do it. You can ask, what is the minimum purely combinatorial condition that still ensures a free proper action and that the whole theory can go through? And it's all this uh, rigamalor, all this uh, compli uh, complicated, but understandable. But let me not describe this, this all these conditions. But this can be made a little bit more general. Let me just say that. More general. And uh, it can be done, the whole thing can be done more general. There is still the canonical foliation that is a CM action. You can think of it as a foliation or as a CM action. 
and uh, and this and it mimics the example that I described. Uh, uh, there is a more in, an even more intrinsic, more closer to classical toric story, but I, I, again, it's extremely nice. But let me not go into that full fledged today. Uh, let me just mention the name of Ishida. In any case, uh, uh, we can re redo the LB, the quantum geometric invariant theory using LBMB theory. And it's what I said. Uh, for even, even fans, but see Shida, uh, the Gale transform will give you another extremely pleasant and nice representation of this, uh, of this stack. Uh, the advantage of this representation is that in amenable cases, as I will shortly explain, this gives you a tight Muller theory for the modular space of quantum toric stacks, quantum toric varieties. This is a calibrated case, this is the group action, and as usual, the non calibrated case is just defoliation. This is just defoliation, this is non, the non calibrated case, this is the group action, this is the calibrated case. This is the Gale transform. In the rational case, you just get the classical toric varieties as proved by Merzman and Berkowski. The irrational case is a non-commutative situation. So what is the idea of the proof? Well, is uh, you, you start with a calibrated quantum fan. You have the mark points in the one skeleton of the fan. You add one vector uh, to have these balancing conditions. You do the Gale transform as before, and you define S as S cross C star. And if you take these complex parameters, miraculously everything works. You take this, this is, uh, this is where the miracle happens. So, so, this is miracle. Because we go from real parameters to complex parameters in a trivial fashion. Nevertheless, everything works. The situation that we have set, uh, we have m is n minus d over two, n minus d is even, and uh, and we have everything like in the example of the P1 that I described before. So what about modular spaces? Well, let me just say, uh, let, uh, if you give me 10 more minutes, uh, let me just say that one can start by considering the modular space of quantum tori. This is the modular space of quantum tori, and Using the fans and all this uh, linear algebra technology that we just described, one can prove that is, uh, is uh, just, uh, well, this is what's our definition of the quantum torus. From this, you can recover the, the non commutative sister algebra. This is the definition of the quantum torus. And one can prove that the modular space of the quantum, one can compute it. It's just this. Uh, uh, and I'll explain this relation in the next slide, but just Rd i minus d modular relation. Uh, it's an arithmetic relation. This is extremely interesting. Uh, as I will explain briefly, uh, but this theorem uh, coincides with a, a reference classification of a quantum tori. In fact, it's a little bit more general, but in the cases that Riffel considers, it coincides with Riffel's classification of quantum tori in non commutative geometry using C star algebras and all that. And because of all this abstract nonsense, uh, actually, it gives a new proof of Riffel's theorem that is uh, a little bit unexpected. But uh, in any case, uh, even if you don't want a new proof, if you take his result, this proves uh, that it coincides with Riffel's classification of quantum tori. Uh, this is the relation. And as you see, this relation depends on a matrix in GLM set, so it's an arithmetic relation. It's a complicated relation. Uh, let me just say that uh, uh, this can be improved a little bit. If, we take, if one takes into consideration this uh, calibration, it, the, the measurement space can be made a little bit better. And now it's more obvious the, the arithmetic condition. There is this just purely combinatorial condition, S, and this arithmetic equivalence relation. 
and this is a this is a, a little bit nicer expression if you take into consideration the calibrated uh, quantum tori. So this is the modular space of quantum tori. This is the simplest possible quantum toric varieties, of course, before compatibilization. But we can do a little bit better. Uh, we can go further. Uh, so we will define the, com the genus, the combinatorial type or genus of a quantum toric variety or of a quantum fan. It's the same to have a quantum fan as it, is, uh, as it is to have a quantum toric variety. As a poset, just the combinatorics, the poset of subsets so of the cones of the fan. Just the purely combinatorial information contained in the fan, forgetting the geometry, forgetting the lattice, the quantum lattice, forgetting the mark points. We just get, we call that the genus or combinatorial type of the quantum toric variety. And also of the toric variety if it was classical. So, uh, uh, well, we get the uh, modular space of toric varieties of genus G and D mark jars, you know, uh, wh where this has to do with the calibration. Remember, it was the dimension, the excess dimension. Remember, we have the calibration going from uh, something to something. And then, uh, well, it had to do with that. In any case, uh, we had this modular space. And this modular space can be computed. And this is, of course, a complicated but writable equivalence relation. This is the real dimension, the real dimension of the modular space of toric varieties. Uh, I think this was the other way around, though. This was the other way around, though. Sorry about that. Uh, so we have this. This is the of the quantum toric, uh, the modular space of quantum toric varieties in uh, of genus G and merger B. So for example, for uh, this modular space, we get this. Let me be more explicit. We get this, where the group, in, uh, the, the symmetric group in three letters acts by permutation of the coordinates and then by this. And this is what the modular space of P2s look like. Again, P2 is the, is the most singular point of the modular space. And then we get the rational points, or the weighted P2s. And then we get the non-commutative P2s, every other irrational point. And that's what it looks like, the modular space of P2s. I, if I only take classical weighted predictive spaces, of course, they are rationally parametrized and they, you couldn't make this modular space. Uh, this generalizes to the PN. This is for PN. Uh, this was P2 and now this is PN. And, and to a little bit more abstract general case that we're understanding that I call the super simplicial case. I could explain this a little bit better, uh, but this is very simplicial, to, so to speak. Of course, PN is. Uh, so uh, th th these are the modular space without calibration. You could consider the modular space with calibration and it is a sort of very nice desingularization. You get much better, a much better situation. In fact, now you get these complex parameters rather than real parameters, you get these complex orbifolds. So by considering the calibration, you get this complex, this complex orbifold, uh, because now you have these complex parameters obtained by LBM theory by Gale transform. So you have the modular space, H, that is whose information is contained in H bar, gives you the V vectors and the Gale transform of H bar gives you the lambda parameters. So this is a, re, a, a way to, uh, contains the same information of H bar, but now it's written in a complex fashion by this Gale transform. Uh, 
and well, the modular space of uh, calibrated quantum toric varieties becomes this complex, acquires this complex structure. Uh, now, if, if you want to go back and think of the modular space of the LBMB manifolds, you know, as a stack, the modular stack of LBMB manifolds uh, using its corresponding uh, deformation theory that has been developed by Laurent Merseman. Well, you can consider this modular space and you can consider this type Muller space of param lambda parameters. And well, uh, uh, another result is that this modular space of genus G and the toric varieties, non-commutative quantum toric varieties, including the commutative and the non-commutative ones, it's a complex orbifold, well, up to homotopy. But when n is equal to d, when the calibration is the gamma complete case, then it's actually, this becomes a complex orbifold. <coughs> so in the comp gamma complete case, we get a complex structure on the modular space of quantum toric varieties, which is surprising to me. And of course, this gives you a tight Muller space and you get a tight Muller theory for the modular space of quantum toric varieties. So uh, this, is, uh, this is nice. Let me just say my very final remarks. In the super simplicial case uh, recently, and this is not in the paper, this is the next paper, we have been able to prove that there exists a natural compactification analogous to the delin monfort compactification for MGM. So this is the, the, uh, the anal analog, to the lin Mumford compactification. So we have uh, that there exists an analogous to the delin Mumford compactification, but we need everything to always land, uh, you know, all the boundary components of the modular space to always land on the simplicial case. So that's why we, I call it the super simplicial case. That's more or less what it means, that we never go out of the simplicial case. So uh, we call it the super simplicial case, and then we can produce uh, this natural complexification. This works well for the projected space. But uh, of course, to, to get, uh, we conjecture that this compactification exists in enormous more generality, not only a super simplicial case, but for this, we need a systematic study of the non-simplicial case that is not included in our paper. But fortunately, uh, Antoine Boivin uh, from Angers, uh, uh, his PhD dissertation with Laurent Merseman uh, is developing the non-simplicial case for uh, all the story and the modular spaces and etc. And hopefully this will allow to produce a compactification in a more general situation for the modular space. This could be a whole entire talk and maybe one day it will happen. But in any case, uh, there is indications that in a very general situation, but certainly the super simplicial case, we have a, a natural the lean non for kind compactification for the modular space of toric, uh, qu uh, of quantum toric varieties. And uh, I finish now. Uh, so uh, that's it.